Welcome to the Battle of Thermopylae. Here we have the pass of Thermopylae. Now, as you may remember, this pass was chosen because it was a particularly narrow passageway, which meant that the forces of Xerxes would not be as effective because it was in a bottleneck and so they would not be able to use their entire massive force as effectively. Uh, most historians think about 300,000 troops, Paratus says 2.5 million, probably not true. Um, but in any case, the pass was something like this. On the one hand, you had high cliffs, and on the other hand, you had a steep drop off to the sea. Um, and coming along the cliffs were the, um, were the Persians, and up ahead in front of them, were the Greeks. Uh, now, at this point, the pass uh, got very tight and narrow, and they had built um, a wall across the pass in order to defend themselves. And you may remember, as they came closer, uh, Xerxes had sent out spies uh, to go and spy out the land and find out what, would, what the uh, Greeks were doing. And as the spies got closer, they realized that down here, the Greeks were busy uh, doing athletic exercises and combing their hair uh, because that's what they did before they went into battle. They wanted to die looking good. And so that uh, kind of freaked out the, the Persians a little bit. Xerxes uh, tried to pay no mind to it, but it was a little disconcerting to know that the Persians, that the uh, Greeks were ready to sell their lives dearly. So the battle actually came. The Persians poured across uh, poured across the pass towards the, uh, towards the Spartans and the other Greeks, and the Spartans and the other Greeks just wrecked them, uh, totally destroyed them, pushed some of them off the cliff face, uh, drove them back in tatters, uh, and the Persians were just absolutely scattered. It was a hot mess. Well, then the uh, Xerxes decided to call in his special troops, the Immortals. Uh, and the Immortals tried their hand at taking over. And they, too, were beaten just as badly as the others had been. Not even the Immortals could face up to the Spartans. And the thing that really made the Spartans and the other Greeks so, uh, so tight, so perfect, uh, was that they were coordinated. They would all uh, go into battle together, and at the same time, they would all pretend to retreat. Ah! And as they were retreating, all in unison, I don't have enough hands to hold all of them at once, but the, the Persians would come roaring after them, breaking their, breaking their battle lines, and all getting scattered so that they weren't straight in lines anymore. And then all of a sudden, at the same moment, the Greeks would all flip around, create their shield wall, and psh, the Persians would run right up against it, and they would all uh, be killed. Well, this went on for two days, and during those two days, Three times Xerxes was so nervous that he actually jumped up in his seat and cried, cried out in horror because of his concern for the poor, uh, the poor individuals below. Well, he didn't really feel bad for them, but he was just worried about his army. But then, but then, a traitor, a traitor from the Greeks came and secretly talked to Xerxes at the Altes. And Ephialtes came and told him that there was another way that he could bring his troops to attack the Greeks. And so Ephialtes led uh, the Persians around by a secret pass, which went up the mountains behind the pass, up high in the mountains, uh, and they were able to bypass, I can't get quite all the way there, but they were able to bypass the, uh, the Persians, or the Greeks, and end up Oh, and end up on the other side here of the pass coming from the back side. Now, the night before, uh, as this was happening, the leader of the Greeks, Leonidas, had heard that this was happening. A seer had told him uh, the future, uh, that, the, that they were going to be attacked from both sides, and also some of his spies had brought reports that there was a large force of Persians coming down the mountain pass. Well, at this time, before they actually got to the pass, Leonidas decided to disband his followers, so he sent most of them home and allowed his forces to escape, uh, allowing them to live to die another day. So most of them went home, and he only kept with him 300 Spartans 
uh, and about a thousand Thebans and Thespians. And uh, they basically knew that they were about to die. Uh, the third day of battle came, the last day, and they were attacked from both sides by Persians. And that basically led to them being completely outflanked. In this situation, they decided to move out into a more open space, away from the wall, uh, where they could fight openly. And soon, they were surrounded on all sides by the Persians. But the Persians were so terrified of them that their, that their, uh, their leaders actually had to use whips to drive them into battle against the Greeks because they were so terrified of the Spartans. And the Spartans would rush at them, and many of them actually just got pushed in the sea. Uh, some of them got trampled by their own men because they would refuse to go forward and they'd get trampled to death. Um, and in the end, it was just by pure numbers that, uh, the, that the Greeks were overwhelmed. Um, and at one point, Leonidas himself actually went down, um, and there was, a, there was four different rushes where the Persians rushed forward to try and take the body of Leonidas, and his men rushed forward to push them back and to recover his body, um, and they eventually fell back to the wall itself, pushing, driving out all the Persians along the way and took their final stand on the wall. Um, and it was there at the wall that the glorious last stand of the Greeks, of the, of the uh, Spartans, took place. And by this point, most of them had lost their spears. Their spears were broken, uh, cracked, uh, and so they pulled out their swords and they were fighting with their swords in hand. And then when their swords broke, some of them were pulling out daggers and using daggers. And finally, once their daggers were gone, they were using just their, their teeth and their hands, fighting literally tooth and nail. Uh, refusing to go down to the very end. And finally, it was not even, uh, the Persians had to defeat them by firing arrows at them so that the prophecy was fulfilled. Uh, when one of the Persians said their, um, their arrows were so thick that they would blot out the sun and the Spartans laughed and said, then we will fight in the shade. It was those arrows which finally overwhelmed and killed the last of the Spartans at Thermopylae. Uh, and after the battle, Xerxes, uh, <laughs> was a little bit shamefaced, um, but he was trying to save face, and so he had um, all of the Spartans piled up, and he buried his own men in shallow graves um, to try and hide the number of people who had died in the battle on his side and make it look like there was only a couple of his people who had died uh, compared to the many, and then he killed a bunch of other Greek slaves and threw them on a pile so that it made it look as though there were a lot of, uh, of, of Greeks uh, who had been killed and very few of his own men who had been killed. And he brought his navy to come and see this, but even the navy realized that this was fake, and they lost heart because of it. And in his great anger against Leonidas, he had his head cut off and placed on a stake in the field of battle so that everybody would remember how much he hated and despised this man. And with that, Xerxes marched deeper into Greece. Dun, dun, dun! to be continued.